Now let's consider the Weimaraner's neck and body. The neck should be clean cut and moderately long, like this. There should be no excess skin or throatiness. This short, thick neck is a major fault. You can see how it destroys the graceful, aristocratic appearance of the dog. This neck blends smoothly into well-laid-back shoulders. Proper shoulder layback with an upper arm of approximately equal length will give the Weimaraner the long reach in front that's so necessary for efficient field work. This dog has an incorrect front. His shoulder blade is short and steep, and he has a long, straight upper arm. This dog is very straight in shoulder and upper arm, though they appear to be of equal length. From the front, the shoulder should appear clean and well-muscled, never bulging or overdone. This dog's chest is also correct. It's well-developed and deep, allowing plenty of room for heart and lung function. This dog's chest appears too narrow and shallow, while this one is too broad. This correct brisket is deep and well-developed, reaching to the elbows, which are held straight and close to the body. Elbows which turn in or out indicate an improper front assembly and are a major fault. The forelegs are straight and strong viewed from any angle. You can see that the distance from elbow to ground is about the same as the distance from elbow to top of withers. Note the good brisket reaching to the elbow. This is the correct length of leg for the Weimaraner. Pasterns have a slight spring like this for adequate shock absorption. Feet are firm, compact, and webbed with well-arched toes. They should point straight ahead. The pads are close and thick. Nails are short and gray or amber in color. Dew claws should be removed. These pasterns and feet are very good. Feet that point east and west are a major fault. These pasterns slope too much and the feet are not as good as the previous set. The Weimaraner's body should be moderate in length, like this. The greatest length should be in the ribbing, not in the loin. The top line is straight and slopes slightly downward from the withers. The rib cage is long and well sprung, followed by a short, strong loin. There is a moderate tuck up. This dog is too short in rib and therefore too long in loin for efficiency and endurance. This dog is too short in body for his length of leg. The Weimaraner is slightly longer than he is tall. He is not a square dog. He shouldn't be too long like this. A Weimaraner that is too short or too long in body should be heavily penalized. Faulty top lines like this roached back, are a major fault. The back should be set on a straight line and should not be swayed or roached. This flat back is also incorrect. This correct back slopes slightly to the tail set, but is straight and strong, with good muscle and short loin. Note again the long, well-sprung rib cage. The Weimaraner should never be slab-sided. The tail is docked and set as a continuation of the spine on a slightly sloping croup. There should be no rounding of the rump down to the tail. The tail length should be about six inches in a mature dog, but its length should be in proportion to the size of the dog. It should be fine rather than thick and should be carried confidently, especially when the dog is moving. This tail is set too low on a steep croup and is faulty. This high tail set on a flat croup is undesirable. 
This tail is too short, which is a cosmetic fault and should not be heavily penalized. Note that a non-docked tail is a very serious fault, but will probably never appear in a show ring. The hindquarters should be well muscled, like this. There should be good angulation of the first and second thigh at the stifle joint and straight, relatively short, strong hocks. This dog is too straight in the rear. This one is over-angulated and weak. From the rear, you can see the powerful musculature that gives the Weimaraner its strong drive from behind. See how the hocks are well let down and are paralleled to each other. These hocks are too long for efficient work. These cow hocks are a major fault and should be penalized. Remember that front and rear angulation should be correct and balanced for efficiency and endurance in the field.